so good. Evening class, I hope that you've been having a good week. Uh, today we're talking about a huge epidemic. Uh, the epidemic of obesity. You know, why is that so important? Well, let's just put it bluntly. Americans are fat compared to our other uh, industrial compatriots, you know, around the world. We are twice the size that we ought to be. When we look at that, a lot of that deals with our diet. Uh, we know that your Mediterranean diet is more leaner meats, rice, you know, your fish, your goat, your poultry, very much more leaner meats, uh, more beans, more rice. Um, even your Far Eastern diet, you know, where rice and other uh, are, are just a staple of their diet but a Western diet very much more higher in complex carbohydrates very much richer very much more fat cholesterol and basing that also with a more sedimentary lifestyle one increases our chances for gaining weight and two increases our risk of contracting cardiovascular diseases as a result of the obesity and so yes that is true and this even is not even for adults but this even starts with our little ones our children are more overweight so therefore overweight children create overweight adults that means that our kids that you know they don't run and jump and exercise why because nowadays we don't tell kids to go outside and play. Kids spend most of their time doing what? Nintendo, Xbox, Roblox, Fortnite, Call of Duty. You know, so your Nintendo, your PlayStation, your Xbox has taken the place of kids going outside and simply playing. And so now we have a higher percentage of children that are even now overweight that are now even more obese. Why? Because we eat more fast food. We don't eat a lot of fresh fruits. We don't eat a lot of fresh vegetables. And so that eating fruits and vegetables has been supplaced with Happy Meals, apple pies, ice cream, and all of those things that go along with it. Now, this is phrased that everything is bigger in Texas. And so that is also true when we look at how much do we eat. You know, do we really eat a portion size or do we eat for two or three people? And so even thinking back, you know, I loved, you know, cheeseburgers and, and fries, you know, and you think about when you were growing up, a, a large soda was only about eight ounces. Now... A large soda is 34 ounces, 44 ounces. I mean, that is a lot of, of, of soda to consume at one time. So you think about if eight ounces is a glass of water, that means you are drinking almost five, almost six glasses of soda in one portion if you had a 44 ounce cup. Even if you had a 34 ounce cup, you were still taking in almost uh, over four ounces or four glasses of soft drink, which is also not good for your teeth, which is also not good. So it just goes on and on and on. So from a lifestyle standpoint, we are really a supersized uh, society. And so now we look at what happens from a psychological standpoint with being overweight. You know, we look at our emotional impulses. We look at, you know, what is your, uh, your genetics when it comes to this? What is your development like? And most importantly, it becomes an issue of self-image. What do we think about ourselves when we look in the mirror and we automatically say, hey, you know, I know I need to lose a few pounds. Hey, you know, I know I need to lose, you know, this. And it affects women more 
because we are such an image dominant society when it comes to the looks and shapes of women. And so now it takes us into overdrive, you know, for what we're looking at. And so now you have people that are suffering from depression, from anorexia, from bulimia, and so from all of these eating disorders, simply because of one, being overweight, or two, not wanting to gain the weight because of their image and their body shapes, because yes, they want to have that what? More attractive look. So we always look at BMI, you know, we look at what are these indicators that, um, that people look at when it comes to uh, coming to health. And so one of the things that we look at is, you know, BMI. Now BMI is not, uh, it's called body mass index. And so basically it looks at your height, looks at your weight, calculates it into a formula, spits you out a number. The higher you are to 30, the worse you are. And so I even thought about this, even when I check, you know, I go to the doctor and the doctor you know, looks at me and he, you know, checks my weight, looks at my height. And he says to me, well, Keith, what do you want to weigh? You know, and I kind of tell him, you know, this is what I want to get to. But at the same time, I can always go back and think about, you know, how I was even before I went to school. And, you know, um, I'm packing on my, you know, they talk about the freshman 15, you know, and, you know, for some people, they never get rid of that 15. That 15 becomes 20 or 30 or 40. But from a lifestyle perspective, having that excess weight on our bodies is not good for us. And we often wonder why, you know, but look at, you know, people who suffer, you, your gallstones and and having heart disease and hypertension you know people you know you you develop you know sleep apnea you know you worry about acid reflux you worry about you know even diabetes and stroke so all of these things play a role even as we are you know overweight and you know I'll be that perfect example of that you know, I am a type 2 diabetic. I was severely overweight. You know, taking shots and pills every day. But, the more that I lost weight, the less medicine I had to take. And now that I have lost this weight, and I've, you know, started being more physically active, my diabetes is down to one pill that I take at night, which I pray that even I won't do that within the next two months. So you know what fits your life and you got to get it there. And so my weight loss was not starving myself. You know, I didn't go on a hunger strike. I didn't go on a depriving, you know, myself. But it's a lifestyle change. I don't believe in diets. If you take the first three letters of diet, it's die. Not trying to kill myself, but it's more of a lifestyle change. This is why health and wellness, it's all about lifestyle. You know, what do you do to modify your lifestyle, the choices and the decisions that you make that help you? Cutting back on your greasy food, cutting back on your fatty foods, you know, what is it that you have to do to keep yourself in that optimum health? So, you know, right now you got people that were on Atkins and you had people that were on South Beach. And now the next fad is just keto. But when you look at all of these things, they're just simply that they're fads. Something that does not stick. You know, where you have high protein, when you have low fat, when you have no carbs, when you have this type of carb. All of these things are fads because you are starving yourself of one thing 
replacing it with another and so what happens is people get discouraged because your body still needs a healthy balance of micro and macronutrients so you cannot starve yourself but you have to be smart in your approach and so you know good carbs bad carbs you know that old South Beach diet you know uh, restricting carbs and higher protein well that can lead to problems you know uh, high carbs and low fats can lead to problems so everything that we look at can become an issue even even people who do Weight Watchers you know Weight Watchers is more of your calorie counting you know what do you do when you want to count calories and so some people take pills you know some people only drink diet foods and as as replacements but it's like having a diet soda you know you have to use everything in moderation because what they take away on one end they give you back on another and so what happens to you it's like you're on a yo-yo and you go up and down up and down up and down up and down and so because of that you become what more stressful and not only did you become more stressful you enter a more dangerous zone you don't have as much patience you don't have as much endurance because you simply give up because it's like I can't do it and you don't have to take my word for it you can look at some of your more famous people that you know just went up and down with their weight up and down up and down up and down until they just said you know what I'm done and they're just saying, you know what, I just can't do it. But that's because we are not being realistic in our goals and our expectations. And so that means that being a bigger person doesn't mean that you are not a fit person or a healthy person. It doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that you have to know yourself and you have to know what works for you so Keith's lifestyle change may not work for my mom or my best friend or my sister or my son or or whoever it may not work for them because all of our bodies are different and so this is a part of knowing our own bodies and being able to make those choices and decisions uh, that will be beneficial to us now that weight gain also determines what joints and and some people have surgery like lap band and um, and and they tie their stomachs and you know they they shrink their stomachs or you know they do all these different things to try to lose this weight but there are three things that are very important to maintaining yourself one is your personal responsibility what you do you answer to only one person and that is the person whom you look in the mirror and see it is you the second thing is be vigilant you are that guardian at the gates you control what goes in and so don't feel bad that if you're not losing a lot at first, but you stick to it. And it's that stick to itiveness that helps you continue on because you know what you want to do. And when people lose, you know, more than 8%, they want to keep it off. So even in my you know even using myself as an example you know when I changed my lifestyle 
I lost 45 pounds. I didn't lose 8% of my body weight on that average. I lost 10%, which is 20, let me see, 24, 25. I lost about 18%, almost 20% of my body weight I lost. And I've kept it off for now a year. And so nothing works for everyone, but it is a personal, personal vendetta. It is a personal journey that we all walk on. And so because America is just so unhealthy, it creates that problem. So from our youngest ages to our older age, that unhealthy eating sets up a bad table for us to sit at. And so most people like to eat till they're full. You know, they eat large amounts of food. They eat not for pleasure, but they just eat because they want to eat. And so it becomes unhealthy for us. And so what we have to do is start to take control of what we're wanting to do from a health and wellness standpoint. So once again, one, be realistic. What is it that you want to do? What goals do you have? Two, you got to recognize that it takes time. This is not a quick fix. There's no, there's no button that you can push to get you to that point. Three, make note of your progress. Reward yourself for your progress. Four, look at your food and find pleasure in it. Experiment with making new and, and, and different things. And when at first you don't succeed, you keep trying. You find out what works best for you. And so when we look at our, our epidemic in the United States of a heavier people, it's because those are some things that we don't do. We don't look to take control. We want other people to tell us how to do things. How do I do it? Well, that's what we have nutritionists for. But at the end of the day, the nutritionist is not with you in the supermarket. The nutritionist is not with you at the restaurant. The nutritionist is not with you in your kitchen. You are by yourself. But one thing that also helps is a family presence to encourage you, to give you that ability to go on even when you feel you can't. And so 90% of what we're ever going to look at is right here. It's in your mind. And we figure out how do we overcome those obstacles, those mental barriers, those physical barriers, those spiritual barriers, those psychological barriers? How do we overcome them? As we begin to answer those questions, it sets the stage for what we want to do in this life. You know, too often we look at our supermodels and think that they are the norm. They're not. And that's why we have all these eating disorders, because we think that if we're not a size four, we're nothing. This is what sets our stage for changing our wellness and, and lifestyle behaviors in the United States. Stop looking at other people. Focus on yourself. And when you focus on yourself and you have that inner spirit and presence to move on, you will. And I promise you, once you decide in your heart that you want to do this, you will develop the tools to be successful. So that's what happens in our country. And if you have time, you know, check out that Supersize Me, uh, that Supersize Me video. 
take a peek at it. Um, and this is not a part of your discussion for this week. But if you do have a chance to look at that video, <coughs> excuse me, um, let me know. <coughs> let me know what you think. I'll be curious to, to hear your responses. Thanks so much. Have a great week and uh, look forward to uh, hearing your questions. Take care.